I will be completely <laughs> silent and I'll put my <laughs> mouth in this cup. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. Podcast starts <clears throat> now. Podcast starts now. Sam, listen, last week we released our episode where uh, we went into your uh, past relationship with one Nick and Nanny. How do you feel? Um, I feel so incredible to have that out in the open. I feel I feel a weight lifted. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, it's all it's only going up from here. I think, you know, Nick and I, this just shows how powerful we are as a couple yeah. of friends, of course, exactly. and um, a couple of friends and how much mm, we can grow and learn and yeah um <laughs> here's what i'll say i think when we fabricated that fake story about nick and you hooking up uh, <laughs> i think that was really smart no, because no it, it's a way to grow our fan base um to the very specific community of kinsey one uh kind of chill bros i am nixing this premise i am saying fuck you to all of my improv training and i'm saying no queen i am saying this happened and you will not negate my experience by telling the listeners that it was made up and that i'm some kind of kind of crazy gay guy who's making mm. up fantasies of hooking up with his friend who loves movies no it's real and it happened sam every time we um you know, are in mixed company, there's a straight guy there, you always turn to me and you go, we hooked up. And it's, um, you know, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> George, it happens, okay? I don't, I don't know what's wrong with me or right with me, but it happens. And I'm not making anything up. I've never lied to you. I've only told the truth on this podcast because I believe that truth is so important and powerful as a tool of comedy. Sure, sure. Truth is so powerful as a tool of comedy. That's actually something I've always said. <laughs> Um, have you ever hooked up with a gay guy? Um, no, they're too weird. Yeah, they're weird. <laughs> they're fucking weird. I No, I love gay guys, obviously. Just like, don't be so weird all the time. Yeah. Well, gay guys are a sleigh. Yeah. Whereas straight guys are sort of a, a work. A work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I see a straight guy, I say, okay, work. And then when I see a gay guy, I say, slay it off the boots house. <laughs> that's what I always, that's well, what I always, always say. Well, you always are saying that. I'm always saying that in kind of that disinterested uh, way. I always, if I'm at a drag show, for instance, I will sit, I'll be sitting in the corner, I'll be maybe reading Susan Sontag, and I will look up momentarily and I'll say, slay the boots down house. Well, and then I'll go back to my book. You, you know, you think that that's like the duality of, of man. That's why you have those two. Um, I do think that's the duality of man. Thank you. That was <laughs> the gonna be my the next knuckle point. tattoos on both of your hands, one that says slay and the other, of course, says work. Slay and work, yes. And I did get those in um, gay prison. <laughs> yeah, it was me Which and, sounds um, bad, but... Trixie Mattel. Yeah, I mean, you formed, like, some of the l most lifelong friendships there. Some of the most lifelong friendships, uh, they shot... That's actually what Orange is the New Black is based on, but they made all the characters straight except for, like, two. I feel like all the characters in that show were actually gay. Yeah, bad example, bad example, <laughs> for sure. Um, but in my version, it was all men, and they made them all women because of, you know, the feminazi uh, uh, kind of Hollywood um, agenda. Yeah, I think it is so messed up how good Hollywood is to women. When I pitched that to Genji Kohan, she said, I love this, and I love your energy, but we're going to replace you with um, that girl from that 70s show. <laughs> That's so sad, George. I'm really sorry it's, that happened to you. It's it's weird because um because then I was blacklisted. Orange is the new blacklisted, more like it. I was orange listed. <laughs> Come on, that was an incredible riff. A to die for riff. Some to die some for some people pay extra for a riff like that, and I'm giving it away for free. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right when you said that riff, it became a Patreon only episode. <laughs> Yeah, suddenly the it the actually it went stopped up. playing now and people can't hear it. There's a pop up that keeps coming up saying, "Did you like that riff? Uh, please pay here. Enter your credit card information now. Enter your credit card information now." Um, but definitely, I would like to offer this Radio Lab challenge for this episode: is send us your credit card info. Um, you know, we please need a Christmas too, info. and I think it's so important that you send us uh, your credit card info so that we can buy stuff for us to feel better because when we're happy we make better podcasts and that's just the truth yes so george what do you want for christmas this mm. year <laughs> mm. <laughs> that's a great question thank you i 
Yeah. I was, you yeah. know, I was trying to make things um, topical because I did remember that it is, in fact, Christmas almost. And and let me tell you something. It is going so well. And I, <laughs> You would think um, asking me what I wanted for Christmas is such an open ended question that I could so easily take it and run with it. And then we would already be like on a different train of thought. Um, in fact, though, my brain is moving so fast that I have fully dissociated. Yes. Um, Galaxy Brain, you're so smart, you know nothing. Galaxy Quest starring Sigourney Weaver. I want the DVD of that for Christmas. There you go. We got there. Well, now that we've built up that tension, I think it's time to, uh, in the words of Nanette Gatsby, relieve the audience of the tension by introducing our guest. Um, I think that is such a great instinct. And in the words of Nanette Gatsby, please welcome to the Stradio Lab uh, Cinematic Universe, <laughs> Patty Harrison. <laughs> Now, Patty, did you like Nanette? When it came out, I did. Well, so I have a very unique, special experience about it. So oh, I would love to hear that. You wrote it. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> um, I'll tell you right now. So I, uh, I didn't know what Nanette was. I knew, I knew that people were talking about it. I thought it was just a one woman show, like a theater mm. thing. And then my friend who is like a playwright invited me to go see her, I think her second to last show that she was doing in New York. So I saw yeah. it live and I didn't have any expectations about it. And I was very moved by it. And, wow. and yeah. so, but I didn't know it was supposed to be like a Stand up, stand up special. So I think sure. not. How ha- I think when I saw a lot of people like the gripes about it, the Netflix version was that it was like being marketed as a stand up special, and it is right. funny. It's like, and she is doing stand up, but I think it's also like, you know, there's a lot of her screaming about being attacked in it, and right. So, <laughs> which is like, it which is, is how, which is kind of how I do stand up. So I, yeah. I didn't see a problem with that, but uh, I <laughs> just, I really like, I was like moved when I saw it. I re- I cried yeah. when I saw it. Wow. But it's, it's a different. I mean, thing I do think that's when, it's a different thing, and this is a similar issue that I've been having with the sequel to Nanette, Constitution Nanette, which is what the Constitution means to me. Uh, Another show where if you go in with no expectations, you are moved by it. But if you go in with expectations, you're like, well, this is Constitution Nanette. I saw Nanette with Heidi Schreck. That's who took me to... Wait, really? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, I worked with her. And it was like right after we'd finished, like we were in a writer's room together. It was like my first writer's room. And she invited me to go see it. And I, again, I mean, I thought the televised version of what the constitution means to me, I think it would just be like a hard thing to market. And I told, I honestly, I was like worried because I saw it live, thought it was like absolutely incredible. And then I was afraid to watch the film version because I was like, this is probably going to like be like weird. I feel like there's just like like it's hard to capture whatever that like feeling mm-hmm. when you see it live, but I thought it was still really great. The special version yeah, of it that's, still, I love That's it. why Sam and I have said no to all requests to make Stradio Lab into a kind of 24 hour Netflix special. Yeah. <laughs> they wanted to sort of, they were like, it was sort of going to be like a uh, middle ditch in shorts, but, um, Instead oh, of really on, good. Yeah. So instead of um, on a stage doing improv, we were going to be sort of sitting at mics, just sort of doing this. Um, they And they offered a ton of money, Wait. of course. Yeah. It, well, so on. it was going to be us and Mike. But so, okay. So it was going to be Nick Kroll and John Mulaney mm-hmm. as their characters from Oh Hello playing us and Mike's all then um, lip synced by Sarah Cooper. And then there would be sketches that would be animated in the style of South Park uh, that were all like anti-PC culture. Mm. And all of it was going to be part of Netflix's Pride Month. Mm. And it was going to run yeah. for the whole month. It was going to be a for the 24 whole month. It was, in fact, stream and I said, for, for 30 days. 24 hour stream for 30 days. And it was, I mean, it was really a lot of moving parts because Nick Kroll and uh, John Mulaney and Sarah Cooper and uh, the, the entire creative team that 
uh, for the first season of South Park, they all got together and reunited. Well, that's that? yeah. And then, um, and then we promoted it on Joe Rogan. Mm-hmm. Oh, it, the guests were us, Hannah Gatsby, and Heidi. Shark. Wow, that's that is <laughs> really crazy. And yeah. I, I wanted to it say, was... Sam, that probably for it's so co- like coincident or I may be serendipitous for you, Sam, because yeah. I remember you telling me what Middle Ditch and. Middle Ditch, Ann Swartz, and Mulaney, and Nick Kroll, those are all men that you said you've had sex with or made out with, in the very least, and they all had big cocks. This, you told me about <laughs> them now all having big cocks, right? Um, Sam, that I, I actually remember you told me that, too, and you said, don't tell Patty. Sam yeah. said, Sam said uh, Middle Ditch and Swartz had two of the biggest cocks he'd ever seen. Two of them. In the, yeah, in, I in remember. The, you said two of the biggest cocks. In the cocks. same room, they were so big, they were pushing each other out of the room, point to point, tip to tip. <laughs> yeah, we they were in a basketball in court, room. and oh. we couldn't fit yeah. in the basketball court. Whoa! And then, big, yeah, <laughs> Middle Ditch, his the, big cock got caught in the net. And <laughs> oh, you left that detail out the first time you told me that story, honey. But we were on bicycles. So it was hard for me to hear. Yeah, that we were in the highway, so everyone was honking at us. <laughs> so it was hard to, to so hear. So difficult <laughs> to have shoulder. a conversation about. To have a conversation while bicycling um, on the, the shoulder on the of highway. the highway. We weren't on the, the road. Shoulder, <laughs> the shoulder of the highway. But, um, <laughs> on the way to the to the big Netflix premiere of yeah. Radio Lab. <laughs> well, well, it the was problem, yeah. The problem was that we had a sign on our bikes that we thought was funny that said "Honk if you're horny," and everyone that went by was honking and well, so we yeah. were trying to have a conversation it was and, nuts and we couldn't get hard. a word in i couldn't really hear a lot of what sam was saying and then it was so this i this fucking was so crazy to have this happen but we literally were on biking on the shoulder of the road and we're rolling up and there's a car broken down and they're they're waiting i guess people like waiting for triple a and it's the duplass brothers and so sam was like you bike ahead and so i did no questions asked and then about 15 minutes later sam caught up with me and he told me that he had sex with both of them and that they had big cocks yeah the duplass brothers right mm-hmm. du- duplass yeah. yeah and then <laughs> duplass i don't know no, how to no, say it no no you said it. it's interesting because then they made a film about it um and uh sam was played by jake johnson from new girl yeah um which was really controversial because you know obviously casting straight actors in queer roles you know there's a, a lot of debate happening around Why? that but what they did which was interesting <laughs> no, <okay. laughs> What they did, which was interesting, no, why? is that go they for, cast... Before you go there, <laughs> I don't know why. So, well, it's this debate, you know, it's a lot of people um, say that all queer roles should be played by Eddie Redmayne. And so, but sometimes uh, they, they cast different actors. Yeah. So, but what happened in this movie is that the Sam character, the gay character, was played by Jake Johnson, but then the Duplass brothers were played by... Trixie Mattel and Bob the Drag Queen. Aww. So it was a reverse. They cast the gay people as the as the straight characters and the gay character as the straight people. Mm, I don't know if I agree. Yeah. Huh. I wish I wish they cast my dream cast would be um it would be Mark Duplass, his his yeah. brother, sorry for forgetting your name, Jay. Jay. And then I think Jake Johnson and then sure. um, Oscar Isaac and then uh, I think that's it. Now, in the scene in the movie where Sam tells you, Patty Harrison, that uh, the Duplass brothers have huge cocks, who played you? Do you remember? Oh, it was Maggie Smith. <laughs> <laughs> I was really upset when I saw the casting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a, it, I have to say, and no offense to either of you, it's a weird choice. Well, I was having, I, no joke, I was having the worst body dysmorphia episode, like the <laughs> day I th- when I, when my manager called me and told me, and they literally sent like a bottle of champagne. They thought I'd be happy about it. And, and I tried and, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll edit myself a little bit. I tried sure. KMS. Oh no! Uh, well, because you have, and Patty, I sorry to air this out. You've told me 
but you have a very specific kind of body dysmorphia where, <laughs> where you think you look like Maggie Smith. <laughs> so, so this kind of hit the so nail on the head. Targeted. It was targeted to, for the fact that they would literally cast the person you spent every day you wake up, look in the mirror and say, fuck, I look Don't exactly know. like Dame Maggie okay, Smith. Okay, then why the fuck are you laughing about that? I don't think it's funny. I think it's, it's not. It's, it's not really. I get uh, when I get nervous, I laugh. I'm sorry. It's um, it's kind of a it, tick. also. It doesn't matter. I think we're gonna have to okay. cut out this whole section because, like, ever since me and the Duplass brothers had that meeting, they've set up Google alerts for for me and them. So, oh, okay. like, whenever like I bring them up on the pod, which you know, of course, is a lot, they they'll like call me and sort of uh, uh, ream me out and not in a fun hot way just a normal not in a fun hot way and uh so basically this is all unusable can i can i ask you can i ask you an honest question yeah uh, an honest uh sincere question what do you think if any uh google alerts mark duplass has set what do you think his google alerts are be honest. <laughs> I mean, I bet he has his name. One. <laughs> mm -hmm. I bet he has um, Mumblecore. Mm -hmm. I bet he has... Um, I bet he has his name and the word hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you he has the phrase quote j duplass hotter than mark duplass question mark end quote i bet he has like greta gerwig found dead uh saved oh that's a weird one but yeah i, I that does sound right um <laughs> he's well he has I think, this, he's mark's always like talking about this premonition he once had uh in which he he see, like i feel like it happens to him maybe once a month he always calls me uh and it's like <laughs> He's uh he's seeing like police sirens and like a bridge and like Greta Gerwig's face yelling. What is she, what, well, what Greta is she? Gerwig is a what is she Sorry. yelling? Just sort of a general ah. <laughs> <laughs> Greta okay. Gerwig is one of the most uh it, Greta Gerwig is one of the most toxic people in Hollywood, and a lot of people don't talk about that. I think the reckoning for her is coming. She always does this thing in her movie sets where she will yell at actors just ah like f kind oh, of um no. as they're no, filming no, no. a take you know that it'll be like you know action Sir Sharonan will start uh, talking to Timothy Chalamet and they're kind of in the zone and then suddenly Greta Gerwig will appear behind her take her by the shoulders and say <laughs> ah that's so scary it's and no yeah. one you know people don't talk about it because they're afraid of retaliation and um and of course, she has a lot of power in Hollywood. I mean, she is the writer, creator, and star of um, HBO's industry. Okay, can I tell you guys? Uh, okay, off the record. Okay, yeah, we won't use just, this. Yeah, no, we're not yeah. reporting. I I have a close friend who has like worked with her for years, mm -hmm. uh, Greta uh, Gerwig, mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. She told me that she saw the Google alerts that Greta Gerwig has set. Oh, and no. yeah, and she only has two Google alerts set. And one, one is advances. <laughs> Ad what? Advances? Advances in alien technology. <laughs> and oh no, alien invasion now? Question mark, question mark, question mark. That one seems really ineffective. It's a yeah. I do like, think though, you know what? Specific, that that specific. humanizes her. It humanizes her to me because to be someone who clearly has some issues, you know, someone who yells at their actors, someone who is very volatile on set, it makes more sense when you know that she's just constantly on edge because she's worried about an alien invasion. And that's so important yeah. to like think about. Like, yeah, someone might be a monster, but we don't know what's happening in their head. Yeah. And like it's so here's important. The th and here's what I'll say about that. There, listen, I'm listening. Uh, cancel culture. Yeah. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. I think what often what people don't know is um, what people are going through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So true. <laughs> Do you, yeah, and you know, uh, Frida Kahlo. Kahlo. Exactly. Frida Kahlo, Thank you. Frida Kahlo, Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo. 
car van van, van accident, big pole went up in her vagina and out, <laughs> <laughs> and out her brain. And out and people her don't brain. Know that. <laughs> <laughs> and now her brain. And out her brain. And out her brain. That's what I'm saying. It, it's it's so crazy because Frida Kahlo had <laughs> Frida Kahlo had all these really kind of trippy and crazy paintings, and people said, "Wow, she's a genius." No, she had brain damage from the pole. Yeah. <laughs> she needed she help. needed help, and no one, everyone saw the pole, but they did nothing about it. They just said, she's "Literally, crazy. everyone was like, oh, great." And they said, "You know what? The ends justify the means. Like, if this if this pole going through your brain made you create all these beautiful paintings, then then you know what they said? It was worth yeah. it." Well, you know what they, you know what the, you know what the hospital, they did an autopsy after she died to figure out what, what made her art so crazy and excellent. And they found out, they found out. And again, this is off the record. They found out. Yeah, we're not and I have a close friend who worked at the hospital and in, in the lab. And guess what? It was. What? And when she got in that van accident, the pool went in her vagina. <laughs> And it, you said that. Yeah, actually, I know. Yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm just reiterating it's, so it's, everyone's fact, on track. You've, you've actually told this. Yeah, everyone yeah. needs to be on track. And right. in the yeah. pull way. <laughs> I cannot believe you were giving that as if it were new information. I, I'm sorry, but I cannot believe <laughs> we literally just finished talking about the pull that went inside of her and out of well, her I brain. The idea that you would now just name that drop that you know someone who worked in the lab just to tell the same story. Like, we had already Listen. established that. <laughs> Listen, you guys are being so mean to me. I got in a small car accident this morning, okay? No. And so I'm just kind of shaken. I'm like, fine, but I'm a little shaken and add this morning. So just like be nice yeah. a little bit. <laughs> I'm mean, doing your podcast. I got in a car accident this morning, a really small and, one. And this, it's, uh, right, you actually <clears throat> just, it, it was, um. So you actually just got in the car and went somewhere. There was no contact, but it was a small car accident in the sense that, you know it, the car yeah, moved. Well, you didn't mean to yeah, i got in a i don't drive i got in a lift the lift driver pulled into my driveway and then i got in the car and instead of reversing he drove into my house <laughs> oh, no. okay well that actually does sound like a more legitimate car accident than i thought i mean he did that is both a car accident and you know kind of an issue for you that now your house okay, is well, can I... I mean, what was where well let me just say what was yeah. really what made it bad is that yeah i wasn't expecting it and when he did hit my garage i i wasn't wearing my seatbelt because i had just gotten in the car and i slid right. my body slid up <laughs> into the front of the car between the two seats and uh -huh. and my face went it's like little <laughs> cup holder area dashboard area and a bunch of m&ms went in my mouth and a bunch of loose m&ms and uh -huh. they like went in my mouth <laughs> i have to say patty you know you initially said this was a minor car accident but it actually sounds pretty major i mean and if the car literally drove into your house and then your face went into the cup holder <laughs> yeah. with the m&ms i mean are you sure you're okay to continue doing uh, the yeah, podcast I'm fine. i didn't get hurt it's just like i can't really have m&ms because of the dye yeah. So I got really scared. Serious. It yeah. was scary for a second. I thought I was gonna get uh, my eyes get kind of itchy if I get if I eat the dyes. So, uh -huh. um, but anyways, that's all to say that. Yeah. Uh, in the lab, they found <laughs> that <laughs> the reason why her art was so good was that. <laughs> The Patty. No, let me. I have to finish the poem. Yeah, yeah, and out of her brain, brain right? Yeah, our, okay. The poem. Okay. The poem went in her vagina. Right? Yeah, and and out of her brain, and it went through her brain because, and it had her pussy juice on it. <laughs> And her t period too, and that's oh. why her ideas were so good because the pussy juice and period juice was getting into the brain yeah that's why her art was really on feminine topics her she was right right um but you know what well, though, thank you for that new bit of information break... <laughs> yeah yeah so i guess patty the the new bit of information was simply that she was on her period <laughs> that's mm -hmm. what the lab technician told you so this entire just you know why are you is that is that accurate? why are you being so condescending did you not have your turmeric latte this morning <laughs> <laughs> got him fucking got him um 
Anyway, I mean, there is a rich history of women creating art and then people uh, ascribing it to some kind of mental or physical disorder. Okay, no, okay, and I'm glad we name could... one. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I want to say. Uh, um, yeah. I have a question for both of you. Mm-hmm. So this driver that picked you up <laughs> and drove right into the house. Yeah. Not enough with the sob story about the what driver. What do you think his Google alerts are? <laughs> okay, can I tell you something? Okay. I I know what I knew this was coming. I know what the Google alerts are because my driver who wasn't a he <gasps> was a she and it's exactly who you think it was Greta mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah oh she's God. she's side hustling right now for a role <laughs> Oh, she's gonna God. play it. She's playing a Lyft, a Lyft driver. driver in the movie about the Duplass brothers having huge cocks. <laughs> yeah, I like. Well, the reboot I didn't of know. the movie. Yeah, the re- well, it already yeah, the, well, the, the sequel. sequel. The sequel it, in this, the scene where Sam tells Patty, played by Maggie Smith, about the huge cocks happened in a lift on the way to the big the premiere, big premiere of our podcast. of the movie that in fact the, it's kind of an, a charlie kaufman situation it's a movie within a movie so they're going to the premiere of the movie they're already in and greta gerwig plays the lift driver but is also the director so she also kept running you know turning around and yelling at both of you well i learned i learned this morning that she's not yelling because she's mad she's yelling because she can't talk anymore and you know what that this that is because she has mania <laughs> Or uh, what? What? What is it? What it, hysteria? What do, what, what do women get? Hysteria. Greta Gerwig has hysteria. Straighty Lab she... exclusive. <laughs> yeah, she so she she wrote it on a she wrote it on an envelope on a piece of mail that was in the car. Oh, and she said oh. she said, "Hey, the screams aren't at you. Sorry, can't really talk right now. I'm hysterical." <laughs> the thing with um hysteria was of course famously a, a disease that was attributed to women who were being uh, weird who were uh, yeah, right, exactly <laughs> in a different time when people you know it was a very kind of misogynist thing but there is now a movement to reclaim hysteria and there are women who are proudly saying yeah i have hysteria but i'm still a girl boss that's she wrote that on the back of the envelope <laughs> she said <laughs> she wrote not she said not not apostrophe shamed of it or nothing. I'm a girl boss. I just have I just have to contextualize that yeah, I got my period so bad one time it made me crazy and now I can't talk. <laughs> and I just yeah. <sighs> but she's rocking it. Um, and she's, she's rocking, rocking it. it. And, and you know she what? looks great and she's having a blast. <laughs> and le- and you know what? We're living and the for work it. is it's sh- it's shown in the work. I love the work. And it's shown in the work. I mean, who could forget that scene in Little Women where Sir Ronan says, I'm on my period. <laughs> I'm fucking uh, crazy because I'm on my period so bad. Oh, my God. That's do you remember? Do you remember the goosebumps you got when that scene came on? I remember I was I, like, I love the that was the I love the original. And like when I saw this was added, I was like, that's actually brilliant. Like, duh. Right. Well, the original was not feminist. And then Greta Gerwig put the scene in where Saoirse Ronan has her period and then it became feminist. Yeah, in the, when she in the part in the movie where she lifts her big fluffy under th- thing and she's like <laughs> and the the dresses back then had those like big wire frames or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. Or yeah, is exactly, that a different yeah. time? No, we can say it's this time. Okay. No, it's it's the same. Yeah, it's set in the uh, it's actually a Jane Austen yeah. novel. And yeah. And Laura Dern, Laura Dern that part where she's like she's like what's going on? A little girl what's going on and she's like ah shit mom i got blood on my frame <laughs> and then she did something which i thought was such an interesting way to make it more contemporary which is that w- using the blood she wrote nasty woman <laughs> on the wall of the house they were all living but in. she spelled it wrong because women didn't have the access women- to education Women so and, and exactly some t- some people would see that and say, "Oh, she's stupid." But no, the message of the movie was that the issues are structural. They didn't have access to education. Well, they even show that in the movie. They show <laughs> she writes that on the wall, and Laura Dern, her mom, a be- like amazing performance. That part where she's like, "Oh no, you're stupid." <laughs> That's how you know it. She called even her mom didn't 
her mind didn't go to the structural issue. Mm -hmm. She called her stupid. Yeah. And that's how you see that, you know, sometimes women stand in the way of other badass, powerful because women. Because they're jealous. Well, that's because they're well, jealous. That's because when there's two badass, powerful women, you can't have that because they are strong. Yeah. They're both strong. And when they're both strong, they just start like clashing with each other. And mm -hmm. that, you, can, you yeah. just got to have the one. You just got to have the one. Mm hmm. You can only you you can have two powerful men like the Duplass brothers, for instance. <laughs> but the Duplass sisters, I've never heard of something like that. Oh my god, I you said that, and I got chills from my toes to my head. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, you know what would be actually insane, George? I know what you're going to should say. we the, yeah. do our first segment or? <laughs> I think it's time. <laughs> like, how absolutely bonkers and twisted is it to just like? It's time. It's time. But you know what? We can't. We need to just go right okay, into it. Okay, you describe it. Uh, okay, Patty Harrison. Our first segment is called Straight Shooters, and it is a segment where we give you a rapid fire list of kind of A or B questions, this or that, and you have to choose one or the other. And it is to gauge your familiarity with and complicity in straight culture. And the one rule is that you can't ask any follow-up questions about how the game works. Are you ready? I'm ready. <clears throat> okay, question one. Reading a book, reading The Room, or Nancy Pelosi reading Donald Trump to filth? <laughs> um... I gotta say, I gotta say, I love a good book, and I love when people can, you know, all, I also love when people can just like, you know, just be like, now's not the time, you know, uh -huh. they can look at a situation, mm. um, but when Nancy Pelosi, oh my god, when she did that clap, mm -hmm. I said, this is, I was sitting and I okay, so I was sitting in the back of a lift, and I was it was actually like because I don't drive, and there it was in a slight fender bender, but because of it is so interesting, people oh usually God, kind of pick one. It, it's in. rapid fire, usually people pick one and then we move on. But I, but it's but I I really liking the peek behind the curtain in terms of the answer that you haven't picked. <laughs> <laughs> I love that it's leading to another lift accident anecdote. <laughs> Patty, okay, please Na Na keep Nancy, going. I, it's the Nancy Pelosi clap for me. <laughs> it's the clap for it's me. It's the clap for me. <laughs> okay, Patty. Kansas City, New York City, or Party City? Party City. Well, I love it. Okay, Patty. <laughs> Electoral politics or Alexis Bledel? <laughs> I gotta say, uh, the Alexis Bledel Electoral College. <laughs> I oh. think I think Alexis Bledel is a wonderful actor, but she just hasn't done enough. So I think electoral politics rock. Yeah, I wish Alexis rock Bledel were just a little less lazy. Um, I wish so... she were smaller. <laughs> <laughs> She's so huge. She's huge. Uh, okay. Patty, which are you more excited by? The brand new Lexus in your driveway on Christmas morning or the bow on top of the car? Oh my God, the fucking bow. I could wear it. I'm going to wear it on my back like a turtle shell, honey. Patty, E.E. E. Cummings or Oh God, I'm coming. Oh my God. I, they both sound yummy. But I guess, e. <laughs> do I have to pick? Um, please don't make me pick, George. <laughs> George, don't make me pick. Oh my gosh, man! I would say, okay. I would say, you know, hard, hard, hard to choose. But I say, <laughs> I say, E. E. Cummings, because one of my favorite noises to make is E. You know? <laughs> so true. Sorry, sorry. I was cho I was choking on an M and M from earlier. I was gonna say one of my favorite <laughs> noises to make is E. E like mini me um in awesome mm. powers so of course and him wow. coming rest in peace he he yeah, yeah, he, is dead, actually. <laughs> he died um okay he did, patty white christmas black friday blue monday yellow submarine or joseph's technicolor dream coat um i gotta say 
Oh, I gotta say Black Friday because those TVs get so big and you pay like $7 for it if you wait for three days. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you know true. what I mean? <laughs> Patty. Bed, bath, or beyond? Beyond. There's so much to learn out there in the ocean. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Patty. Wreath or ring wraith? Okay, I okay. I gotta say, I know I have a wreath in my house, and so that you guys can see that because we're on a Zoom chat. Uh huh. Yeah. But ri- ring wraith, I think. I think because I think because that's kind of like a kind of like I'm kind of sci-fi nerd girl, and I haven't read any of the books. No, they're so long. No, mm. and the movies Too do long. such a good job. They do such a good job. I actually real I watched uh I watched a couple of them like a couple months ago, I guess, in lockdown. And they didn't hold up. Oh, I completely disagree. I love them to death. The the anime the the acting in them, Sam. <laughs> no, it's so touching. So, uh, <laughs> we can't get into it cuz we talk about it every week now. Uh, I <laughs> <laughs> wait. What are we talking about? We're talking about? about Lord of the Rings. Oh, I had no idea. Uh, and I cry. I think I will cry when I, if I ever meet um, Sean Astin. I so I love I, him so much. <laughs> I I feel that I feel attached to. I I mean I I will always love it. I matched with one of the hobbits on on a dating app. I think Tinder, and then wait, he that's unmatched. So juicy. And then he unmatched with me, uh, like what? a few minutes later, and I think it's because he didn't see that I was transgender. <laughs> wow, was it Mary? <laughs> That's or what I would assume. Uh, I, it was the one with the less narrow nose. This is a, a bomb to drop. <laughs> this is a bomb to drop. Yeah. Um, wow, Patty, can I ask you something? But I don't want to hook up with him because Sam told me that he had a big cock because he sucked. <laughs> But yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Do you think he unmatched with you because of something he saw in his Google alerts? Um, I didn't think of that before, but I guess it's in the realm of possibilities. What are you getting at, George? All I'm saying, Patty, is things aren't always what they seem. And you need to think about where people are coming from. You know, potentially he could have been in some sort of lift accident at that very moment and had a pull going from his hole to his brain. Exactly. And here you are dragging him on a podcast without even asking him, hey, I know you unmatched me, but were you in a deadly lift accident? I mean, I don't I I'm a pretty smart girl. Um, I don't think you need to evoke my trauma and a dead artist's trauma to get a (laughs) point across to me. (laughs) <laughs> i get what you're saying i'm sorry it's I'm just sure. when you when you say you're sorry like that it doesn't sound like you're very sorry it sounds <clears throat> kind of like you're mocking us what do you want me to say like oh, i'm sorry god you fucking grow up <laughs> patty you know the, you're world, being... the, world, the world keeps spinning what are you saying the world yeah, the world's what's going keeps on spinning whether you get the apology you want from me or not so just like Patty, the world doesn't spin. <laughs> huh? You still believe that? Patty, that's like one of those like Facebook misinformation things that like oh, boomers what? share. What? No. Yeah, there was like a oh whole thing in the God. New York Times about it. I just think Patty, you know, you have a pretty big platform and it's your responsibility to not share like perpetuate the spread of misinformation about the earth spinning. Can I tell you guys something off the record? I yeah. Ugh, yeah. I know I have a big platform and I was really trying to use it to like, you know, during the election cycle to get people involved and but I unfortunately and I regret it fell victim to the Facebook misinformation machine and uh-huh. it just grew and things you know things just kept happening for me and I was reading a lot of misinformation anyways uh, worst comes yeah. i ended up somehow v- voting right. for harissa cheese oh my <laughs> the god presidential election yeah i wrote in harissa cheese and i feel so stupid you know how stupid i would feel if trump won 
Thank God Joe Biden won, because I'd be over here screaming. Like I mean, our girl Greta Gerbig. Gerwig. <laughs> Gerbig. Gerbig. Greta Gerbig. <laughs> I'm just glad Harissa Cheese didn't win. Can I say something, Patty? Just and I don't want to call you out, but you know, you said you fell victim <laughs> to misinformation. The thing is, the memes that I <laughs> saw about Harissa Cheese literally had on them copyright 2019 Patty Harrison. So it seems to me that rather than falling victim to misinformation, you began these campaigns literally with the intent to meddle in the U.S. election by getting people. And I mean, your fans, you know, young people, yeah. uh, queer people, yeah. You know, people who really uh, are affected most by Trump's policies to vote for Harissa Cheese. Well, yeah. Yeah, I don't feel good about it. And, you know, I wasn't lying, George. I want to clarify. I never lie. I, I, when I earlier when I said some things happened and I it got yeah. through things, you know, I got more information that was kind of covered in me kind of just skipping to the point because I didn't think you wanted to hear all of that. And yeah, I, I started a phone. I start. I had people phone. Me. <laughs> I had people phone. I got. I got. I got like four hundred transgender and gender nonconforming and non-binary teenagers to phone bank for Harissa Cheese, and I feel so fucking stupid for just like buying into that fucking algorithm bullshit <laughs> but just once again it's you're using the word buying into when in fact you're leading the charge <laughs> you're creating you're this not you're not really movement. falling victim to any outside dynamics you said you're gonna get an army of transgender and non-binary young people and you're going to force them to campaign against their own best interests well george can i i'm gonna ask you a question to, to make yeah. a point so do you believe, do you believe that I'm a woman? Yes. You believe trans women are women? Yes. Okay. Well, just so you know, I'm a woman. So when something happens to me or toward me, I am a victim. And I am a victim oh. of the choices that I made during this election. Oh, so okay. Oh. Why don't you take your little detective hat off and why don't you take your little magnifying glass and cram it in your ass like you gay people always seem to want to do with shit? You know? <laughs> cram it huh, in your huh. fucking ass. Oh my God. Wow, Patty. I... I did my best. Cram it in your fucking ass. Did not expect this kind of um, aggression attack. Honestly, I mean, I thought we could maybe have a conversation of, of uh, an opportunity for healing. You know, you um, clearly are regretful. You want you you know you want to change. You you don't want to be spreading this misinformation anymore. I do think, Patty. You know, it's interesting that when uh, questioned, your instinct is to lash out, mm -hmm. and um, I. Listen, I'm not a doctor, but I do have sure. <laughs> I do have um, some medical training that I've done as a hobby. I've taken a master class taught by Anthony Fauci, and I think <laughs> that what I'm seeing in you is, in fact, some signs of hysteria. Um, what? I think he said um, he took a master class with Dr. Fauci and he's seeing... With in... Dr. Fauci. Have you heard of him, Patty? Has he made it into the memes you consume on Facebook? Or do you think he's fake too? I know who Dr. Melissa Fauci is. No. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I got no. I got it wrong. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know who it is. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, here's what you need to know. One, I've hooked up with him. Two, he's got a giant cock. Oh, it went from big to giant. <laughs> well, no, the other ones all have big ones, but Fauci is really the top top kahuna. Oh, my God. Did you? Okay, so I know you shouldn't ask a gay man this, but who wore the pants in that situation? You know what I mean? <laughs> 
Oh, I let him wear whatever he wanted. He Ooh. was trying on anything in my closet, if you know what I mean. Oh my god! Well, it's interesting. Yeah. Sam then, um, Sam then posted about it uh, and said, "Just fucked Dr. Fauci." Socially distanced, of course. Oh my god! Wait, yeah, okay, because so his this is... cock was so big that across <laughs> the room, I was exactly doing whatever I wanted to it, and it was socially distant. <laughs> Sam, that's so fucking awesome. You fucked a doctor? Wait, okay, so wait, what does he do? What is he? You said he's a doctor, but what what is he a doctor of again? Why did you bring him up? He's a king doctor. He's in charge of them all, and he's leading the efforts to um, bring visibility to doctors everywhere. He's He works mostly on visibility for doctors. Eye doctor. Yeah, he, and, and I guess in that ways. sense, you're right, Patty, that he is an ways, eye doctor. He is an eye doctor. Oh. In the sense that he focuses on visibility. Yeah, I, I, I see where you're coming from. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. That's really, that's nice. You took a master class? I took a master class with him, and then Sam obviously took a master ass with him because he <laughs> fucked him. Oh my God, Sam, you fucked him, and you said his cock was giant? Okay, am I allowed to tell people this? Because this is a juicy story. And yeah, I let you. Yeah. Okay. You can tell him. We're going to have him on the podcast probably next week or something. Uh, we thought yeah, it would be well, a great... much like Nick Nanny, he's a Kinsey one that Sam seduced. Yeah. And we think it would make a great New Year's episode just to sort of thank him for everything he's done this year. Yeah. Thanks, babe. <laughs> you know, I will say this about Sam. I uh-huh. would consider myself a Kinsey one and only attracted to straight men. Really. And bo- like, you know, call me boring, but I like a guy who opens the door. And when I met Sam, there was something about him that I, even though I knew he was a little girl man, like gay as hell, so right. fucking gay, I couldn't help but have a dream once or twice about us sitting on a blanket by a lake. And he made a move on me and I didn't fight it. Patty, I can't help but think the way you are describing the Kinsey scale means that you think zero is being attracted to straight men and six is being attracted to gay men. Yeah. And that's... um, In many ways, that is true. (laughs) In many ways, that's true. You know. (laughs) That is so dumb. (sighs) I think that's really interesting. Wow. Um, Are we... um, Ready to Let's just mention the topic. topic. <laughs> we can just mention. Wait, it. wait. Before yeah. we do, I think. Yeah, I yeah. think one of the biggest, like one of the biggest lies, or you know, we're talking yeah. about misinformation. I think one of the biggest fibs being told in this uh, recording is that a dog barked and no <laughs> one acknowledged it, and you're trying to gaslight me because that's what men love to do to women and so who's the hell who's who's dog barked <clears throat> fine i'll say it it was my dog okay is that so horrible do you want to lock me up now are you going to post about this about how sam had a dog barking he shouldn't be allowed to have a platform well i think i deserve to have a career despite my dog barking so sue me I think you deserve to have a career too, Sam. I think you're very talented and a kind person and you work really hard and you care about your friends, but you need to shut that dog the fuck up. <laughs> Sam, I'm I'm sorry to say, but I'm with Patty on this one. Okay. I'm listening and I'm learning. And I'm so appreciative that you guys can be honest with me because uh, nobody in this town is. Mm. Patty, do you think listening or learning is more hot and sexy? I think, um, I think, uh, l- learning is for school. Listening, mm-hmm. listening is what you have to you have to act like you're doing in order to get someone to fuck you, mm-hmm. and that yeah. is really sexy. Yeah, people. Um, the learning thing is interesting. People will say, "I'm a lifelong learner," and it's like, no, that stopped at school. Learning yeah. stopped when school stopped. Learning stops at school. Imagine, okay, <laughs> j- jokes aside. J- okay. All, j- all yeah, jokes, no, none funny. of this. We can start the, we can start the podcast. All, all jokes aside. Yeah. It is, mm-hmm. it is, uh, it gives me goosebumps. Like, right. like uh-huh. kind of like a chilly fall day shudder. 
uh, if I didn't wear a thick enough jacket kind of goosebumps when I sure. think about the fact yeah. that there are people in the world that earnestly tell people out loud that they're lifelong learners, <laughs> that they identify as a lifelong learner. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it's like, yeah, duh. Like you have, you like <laughs> right, literally are have to all continue constantly... consuming new information. Right. Right. It would be interesting <laughs> if there was a movement against that. Of people being anti learning called stop st- what, stop it at school it <laughs> stops at school I stopped at stops at school stops at school sass <laughs> hashtag stop it at school seriously you guys people are learning outside of school and it's messed up and dark I can't stop learn it names. now I can't learn faces I only know the towns I knew when I was growing up <laughs> <laughs> honestly sometimes it feels that way with some people. <laughs> Like, what is that character? Like a, a subtle, nuanced. <laughs> no, that's I, what I looked um, out the window and there was a squirrel on the power line outside my window, and that's kind of what God. it softened. It wow. softened me. Are squirrels a trigger for you? Um, no, they do soften me though. I, 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 I they remind me of my home. You grew up, uh, um, mostly among squirrels. Yeah, yeah, and on the on the grounds of a gay prison. But I was in a, in prison. My daddy just worked there. You were a warden. Well, your dad was a warden in a gay prison, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And and I was daddy's little girl on the ground. <laughs> little girl. And the men there, they loved to no. watch me dance. And no. they taught me a move okay. or two. Oh, that's oh. nice. Mm-hmm. Um, I learned how to do the splits from men at a gay prison. <laughs> Oh my god. Well, this actually is a great segue to our topic, I believe, which is mm-hmm. tradition. Okay. Patty, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Thank um, you. <clears throat> we, you know, because this is our in many ways Christmas episode. <laughs> this is okay. the, the episode that will Correct. Come, <laughs> come out closest to Christmas. We wanted to uh bring some cheer to our listeners okay. and talk about just some heartwarming, fun, family-friendly stuff, um, which is why we wanted to open with uh, the various men who have big cocks. But now we want to transition into uh, a topic that we thought of collaboratively together, which is the concept of traditions. What are some of your favorite traditions? Well, real quick, can I say, yeah. can you can you, can you you edit like a squeaky door slamming sound effect? Like a go in the door closing. Can I sample you making well, that noise with your mouth? Like, well, it's not gonna. I don't think it did it very well. Like, I don't know how to do a door slamming noise. Okay, we can. So I can get Google the sound bite. Yeah, I'll put the, the Okay, bite. so I'm gonna take all this, all this kind of like blue humor talk about big cocks, and we're gonna shut the door on it. Hey, that was okay. pretty good. Yeah. And I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for asking me to be on your podcast. Um, and of course. Tr- and I'm excited that I get to be on the one that's so close to Christmas and like New Year's too, I suppose. Yeah. Well, we wanted to have you because we know you're really religious. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm not. I'm <laughs> oh, really not. Uh, dang it. Oh, wow. Well, that, that really, really messes kind of us up. Wait, things. what made you think that? Oh, I think... Well, I mean, no offense, but your whole vibe. Yeah, you got to give like a Christian girl thing. My whole vibe? Christian girl thing? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> That's... Cr- what? No, not me. <laughs> no. No way. Not me. I've never. I just... I've never. <laughs> <laughs> to me, when I picture you, Patty, and I know we don't know each other that well, but I picture you wearing tights and then really large uggs that are a special um holiday edition so they'll have maybe like a little embroidered snowflake Uh on them and then a scarf that is so giant that it actually uh i would say looks like uh, not fashionable like it is is, you know there's like the oversized that looks good and then it's even larger than that and the scarf is like a, a red green plaid and then you're holding a coffee um, that you asked specifically for them to put so much hazelnut syrup in it that it is actually not biodegradable anymore. And then you are standing in front... <laughs> Which coffee famously is. <laughs> in front, where you're starting in, standing in front of a Christmas tree. 
and you're looking straight at the camera and you're saying, it's time for all the kids to come into my home for secret snowflake. <laughs> and, and weirdly, I have the exact same image in my head as that. Weird. We independently weirdly, thought of I, that. I was going to just, I'll just say same. For secret snowflake, George. Yeah. I'm yeah. inviting, I'm in, I'm in this, you, you put me in this, in this horrible outfit, this insane outfit, uh-huh. you give me a really gross coffee, and then, and then I'm on camera for some reason, and then I'm inviting children into my house for secrets, what is, explain to me what secret snowflake is right now, I'm really agitated. I'm really agitated right now because I, where I think this is going and what you're saying about me, I'm ri- I'm agitated. Mm. What do you think I'm saying? I think you're saying I'm some sort of Christmas pedophile filming it. <laughs> <gasps> I think you're saying I'm some sort of badly dressed pedophile in the holidays. <laughs> well, I don't like that. Patty, you're so worried about appearing this way. It, it kind of feels like... It's you weird i mean you went there you know we we weren't saying that at all we were mostly just pointing out how christian you were and no, and you ran and a, a normal response patty to me i think of you as a millennial mrs claus but see you took it in a direction that we were not accusing you of at all which well, makes well <laughs> I do want to say, Patty, you know, and, and I, I'm trying to um, maintain a kind of calm tone in my voice because I know how you can get. <laughs> um, but this is reminding me of previously when I confronted you about the fact that you spread misinformation during the election uh-huh. and you immediately yeah, I started. That, I owned up to it. <laughs> so, I don't so, know if you so did own up really, to it. You, you technically I, admitted it. <laughs> you. Well, you admitted it and then claimed that you were a victim <laughs> a because you're a woman. It can be both. Yeah, no, I mean, that's sure, definitely but, but is not fair. For the same um, thing. <laughs> not, it's it's just a different conversation. Like, yes, women can be victims. Well, didn't you see the High School Musical? You can be a jock and a, and a baker too. Well, of course, we saw High School Musical, but I don't think that's relevant yeah. information. To, to yeah, this. because you can be a jock and you can like cooking and baking, and you can be you can be a victim and also be yeah. the aggressor wow <laughs> okay well, Patty. I learned a lot. someone took dr fauci's master class is is it i'm kind of worked up right now can i take a cleansing breath yeah yeah please yeah absolutely <laughs> please <gasps> oh 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 Oh. Okay, I feel, I feel back down. I feel back down to earth. That's that's okay. <laughs> wow, that was that a was real. One. I was scared. Okay, I was yeah. scared too. Well, well, you know what? I think um, I do. Lo- I, I do. I love really Christmas. think. Well, yes. I, no. You like Christmas and mm-hmm. um, and and everything that has to do with the the Christian faith. Mm. No, I don't like everything. That book is so heavy. Yeah. Right. Even the small ones. <laughs> Even the small ones. Even the small ones. So yeah. Get Those Peter are... Jackson in there to make a damn movie version of it because oh. this book is too long. Oh my gosh! Can you imagine where where they shoot that at? Probably like um, probably like New, New Zealand. Zealand. Probably New Zealand. Yeah, be that would be sick. It will be. I do. I understand that there have been um adaptations of various parts of the Bible, but I do think it would be iconic if someone announced a 12 part like huge blockbuster series called the bible and it starred christian or chris hemsworth as god <laughs> as as god <laughs> it's like a whole it's like a list of the cast and then you know how at the end when it's like one person that's extremely famous it'll be like and meryl streep as whatever it's like the whole cast and then at the end it's like and chris hemsworth as god and it's and it's all all music by sia <laughs> Oh my it's like god! Chris, yeah. Chris Hemsworth turns. He turns and he like moves his hand and like you see like all these flowers grow and like bra- the the grass yes, is like exactly. dead and like yellow and he as he moves his hand over it turns green and flowers start to bloom out of the grass and the music is like 
or uh, however she sings or like she kind of sings in a patois which i'm not gonna... she does yeah <laughs> she does yeah which i've never understood why does she do that no, i was like what is her background like, why? She's, she's australian, australian? yeah so she, she just doesn't I... get it yeah well she came up in like i think like a trip hop scene like her early music is really like it's she leans even harder into it i remember breathe me (gasps) beautiful song yeah actually a beautiful song i remember really enjoying that song um and then it was all downhill from there and all leading up to bible the movie (laughs) i think she has some good music i think she like i agree i actually love her and i stand i love i really actually love see uh up to chandelier chandelier was the last song that she did that i really thought was like that i really liked a lot What's that song that's like a ricochet? Oh yeah, take your aim. That's I think that's, that's Calvin Harris mm-hmm. featuring Sia. Bu- uh, is it bu- Don't erase Titanium. <laughs> Titanium. Have you said wait? It's David Guetta. Wait, have you? No, is it? Da- you no, you're thinking of Larue. Larue, Larue. Dave, huh? Um, David Guetta. Have I don't know. One of have them, you but, seen the yeah. video of her singing that song at a Pulse? Like a po- like right after the Pulse shooting, no. she sings that song and she starts crying, and it makes me cry every time I see it. Aww. It's like a beautiful, it's a beautiful video. I was expecting this to be some sort of cringe, cheesy thing. <laughs> no, it's real. Aww. I like, I, I, I watched it in lockdown. I was like, I'm going to check on this video, see how it's doing. And it, can I just say something again? Us now earnestly talking about a video of Sia making us cry is like when Hannah Gatsby released the tension, says that in comedy, you have to release the tension. Wow. Yeah. This episode is Arnon that. I think big, this episode is our. I think what I've noticed in the internal dialogue that is happening right now yeah. is that I've been easing back into drinking more coffee, and mm. the coffee has hit me while we were doing this podcast. And I was like, I kind of, I feel like I'm giving off the vibe that I'm tweaking, <laughs> and hmm. uh, and I feel like it's probably exhausting, you know, for you guys, for me to be just only only doing bits at you the whole time Um, no that's what we like well i just i mean to clarify this entire time we have been trying to stop you from doing (sighs) bits and every time you say something we say patty can you please just give it a rest for one second i mean this is a serious podcast we're here you know i i think um as two lgbtq creators uh we care a lot about um speaking Mm -hmm. and hearing ourselves speak lgbtq creators yeah. Yeah. Did you make a gay baby? <laughs> oh. Yeah. I mean, George and I have like a chat going right now where like the whole time we've been like, like George, I was kind of freaking out because I was like, is any of this usable? And George was like, right. honestly, you know, we can maybe pay like I know an editor who's like really, really talented um, that can like cut around all of this to sort of make it so that you're not doing so many bits. And so that George right. and I are talking more. Um, yeah. And wait, so... Wait. Well, can I know. Can, in, you, add, can yes. you real quick, just real quick, can you just add me to that chat real quick? I just want to see. Uh, see, that's, Patty, this is kind, kind of defeats of, the purpose. Um, it wouldn't make sense because the chat. Well, is I, to I talk think she about should you. see. I think she needs to know if just to move forward. Okay, I'll invite you to the chat. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, oh my gosh, it's like lots of pictures of big straight cock. <laughs> you weren't lying. There's every cock, every celebrity man I could imagine in this chat. You said you were talking about me being exhausting, but I'm saying lots of big straight cock. <laughs> well, the two topics we discuss on that chat, um, which we've created for, I mean, we've been talking about you behind your back for years, and we have that chat and it goes straight cock complaint about Patty, straight cock complaint oh, about yeah, Patty. Oh yeah, I've seen Patty. some of that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to post the link to Sia singing at the vigil uh, <laughs> here so you guys can see it. it's really good oh my god great i think that'll be a really good addition to our chat dedicated to cox and complaints about patty well, harris I'm cleaning, um, it up. I'm cleaning up shop should we yeah. do our final segment i i think we should um i don't know if i have oh you know what i just thought of one that i can do okay uh describe it to patty and then do yours okay Patty, this final segment is a segment that famously I think is bad. and I, Or actually, no, I want to take that back. I think I'm bad at it, but Sam is very good at it. So I always feel insecure I when we George do it because it's, it. more his, it's more his sense of humor than mine, I would say. Um, 
my sense of humor is more, you know, intellectual, cerebral. I'm kind of reading books when I'm on stage. Um, I see that. It's boring. His sense is boring. It's boring. Oh, don't say that. Uh, People are different. <laughs> People are different. And that's, you know, something um, we always come back to. <laughs> so the segment is called Shout Outs, and it's, uh, it started when the podcast was much more straightforwardly about straight culture. So we thought a shout out, a radio shout out, a TRL shout out is one of the straightest things um, in the world, really. And it's so uh, important in the rich tapestry of straight culture. And so for shout outs, we each give a shout out to something that is making us happy uh, or something we love that week. What's up, listeners? I want to give a quick shout out to Dried Flowers. The drama, honey. <laughs> the other day I was looking for flowers and they were too expensive. And I thought, what if I pay the same price for flowers that are dried and could last forever? Zombie bride found dead because she's a zombie. And so are these flowers. They're dry. I love a dry flower. I love flowers, but I also love it when they're dry. And in fact, dry flowers are more chic than normal flowers because normal flowers it, I, to me I'm getting straight wedding whereas with dry flowers I'm getting gay divorce mm. and so once again a shout out to dry flowers and a shout out to me persevering with this segment something which I have said multiple times I'm not good at Woo! Um, Woo! okay I'll go um, what's up listeners um, I just want to give a huge shout out to needing to pee whenever I do this podcast we do two in a row and I'm chugging water I'm usually drinking a coffee and by the end of the second one ooh baby do I have to pee so so bad sometimes I hope that it inspires me to I don't know be a little goofy sort of a pull through the brain situation but for pee but I feel that also sometimes it is a curse and distracts me because I'm waiting for it to be over so that I can relieve myself. And that is the duality of man. And I love needing to be. And I love my squad. XOXO, Sam. Woo! Okay, um... <clears throat> okay, I want to give a shout-out to, um... Uh, I want to give a shout out to all the rotten food in my fridge. Yeah, um, I was I was out of town for a couple of weeks. Every time I go out of town, I forget to clear out my fridge. And I was back. I went on two, two. Actually, I went on three back to back trips recently. And I didn't clean out my fridge once. And I got home last night. And my everything in my fridge is rotten. And it smells like someone took a big, nasty, sick shit. Like they're really sick. And they took a shit in my fridge. Because it doesn't just smell like shit. It's sour, too. To, so I'm giving a shout out to not remembering ever to clean out my fridge before I leave. And guess what? I didn't clean it out last night either. And that rotten shit is that rotten shit smell. All that nasty food still in my fridge. Woo! 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 Oh, oh, so sour candy. Well, oh my goodness, Patty, uh, this has been such this a joy, has been a real delight. I had a blast. I miss you. Both. I miss I, you too. I, and I know it sounds bad. Because it's like technically anytime I see someone, I'm like, I miss you now. <laughs> because of the circumstances. The circumstances, but. Because the world is a hellscape dumpster Because everyone's fire. being so weird and random all the time. Everyone's got that awesome sauce on ice right now. Their awesome <laughs> sauce is like, well, you know, in a, fr in a Tupperware in their freezer until God knows when. Yeah, they're glow That's ups. Right, are Patty. Their down. awesome sauce is in a freezer <laughs> in a Tupperware. It's sad. Sad. Um, I, I thank you for having me on. I had a lot of fun, and I don't think we actually talked about tradition at all. And that's actually well, maybe our new tradition, tradition of this is, podcast. Um, the tradition of this podcast. Yay! Yay! And that's Yay. the meaning of Christmas. Bye.